What's up guys? So in today's video we're going to be working on scikit-learn and pretty much just going over flashcards. Now what I'm using for those that don't know is Anki and it is known as a space repetition flashcard software and all space repetition is is it means you study the flashcard on day one, uh, you come back you study on day two and then on day four you'll go ahead and study it and then on day eight and so on and the point is that you practice it over a prolonged period of time so that way you're able to retain all of the um, in our case, vocabulary for data science, um, at least for these couple, first couple of videos I'm creating. So I have a number of different um, flashcard sets, and I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of click on, how about we go with, I was thinking pipeline, but let's go ahead and do like a cheat sheet. And then I'll go ahead and also use Google Colab, which I've already mounted and let's go ahead and make sure that we have our Titanic data set live. So no such file or directory, so let's go ahead and change the directory. And then let's go from there. And there's still no file or directory. Okay, so we need to remount. Okay, so now that we've mounted our drive for Google Colab, um, I've changed the directory, so now we have our Titanic data set ready to go. So all I'm gonna do is just pretty much just see what pops up, and then we'll just kind of go from there. So this scikit-learn cheat sheet should be just the very, very basics. Maybe um, I won't get into it too much, but I'll just do these as, um, yeah, just do these flashcards. So this is just as much a study session for myself as it would be for someone that's new to uh, data science. Now, yeah, I'll just go ahead and dive in. So the first question is, is what are the exploratory data analysis libraries? Now, there are a number, but there are essentially three core main ones. Um, for those that are new, feel free to pause the video whenever and just kind of guess or recall what the exploratory data analysis libraries are. Um, and generally speaking, there are like three really core ones that usually most individuals use. Um, technically two, I guess, but one of them would be NumPy, um, depending upon what the data is that you're working with. If you're working with um, maybe TensorFlow or PyTorch, um, then you NumPy, but uh, generally speaking for exploratory data analysis, it would be Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. Um, but on this flashcard, I should only really have matplotlib, um, numpy, and pandas. So let's see if I can make this bigger. Nope. Oh well. So I'm really comfortable with what EDA is in essence and how to perform it. So I'll just go ahead and click on easy and move on to the next one. So working with the blow, how can we split the data? So in essence what we have here is we're taking our heart disease data frame and we've imported our, our as well um, our Boston data set which is a uh, data set directly linked to scikit-learn dot data sets and then just import load Boston from there what we have is we've got Boston data frame which is our variable and we're gonna go ahead and say PD dot data frame Boston data columns equals Boston feature names so in essence we're gonna go ahead and take our data and then also the um, names which will be the columns and what we're going to do is we're going to have Boston target equals a series for the target. So if we had to split the data, it doesn't really say to split into train and test, it just says to split it. So generally speaking, when you do bring up a new data set, you'll split into an X and a Y. And X will be every data or every column except for the target column, which would be our right target column right here. And by the way, I will use data set and data frame interchangeably, mostly because I'm accustomed to saying data sets having worked with, um, yeah, data sets. So yeah, so we'd split into X and Y. So that's pretty easy. Um, next, so working with the blow, how can you split the data into train and test? So <laughs> I created this flashcard maybe two days back, so that's why it's really fresh in my mind. But 
Um, if you can recall, we had our X and our Y. How would you be able to split the data into a train and test? And we haven't actually imported the um, the library or the uh, function necessary to split the data. So what would you import from scikit-learn? And then how would you split it? So what I would do is, for example, what I would do is I'd go ahead and do from scikit-learn, from sklearn, dot uh, model selection, import train test split. And then from there, I would do, I would see the data, import numpy as mp, since I don't have it on this uh, in Colab right now. And then from there, I would do our data frame. And then I would say, actually, I would split into x and y first. So x and y. x would equal data frame dot drop. And then it would be survived for this data set, since it's the Titanic one. Um, axis equals 1. And we're doing axis equals 1 because 1 resembles a column. 0 resembles a row. And then y would be data frame dot survived because when that, what's essentially happening is we're dropping the data set here and we're taking everything except for the survived column, which is our target column. And then y will just be our target column, which is the survived column. And then from there, what we would do is I'd go ahead and do x train, x test, y train, y test to split the data into train and test equals train test split um, and then we'll do x y test size equals 0 0.2 and now if I didn't actually have random seed here what I would do is I'd do random state and I could do that equal to 42 but since we have our seed I'll go ahead and leave it as is and the reason we want to seed it is to make sure that our results um, can be replicated by any other individual if they run um, run the notebook uh, on their end. So I'll just go ahead and press enter and we don't have anything showing so let's just do x train just to see what it would look like and then we'd have our x train data. So let's go ahead and see what the answer is. So yeah, so pretty much just like exactly what I went over except instead of using the Titanic data set, what they did is they did heart disease, dot drop, and then the target column and now when you're working on a real data set, like just as a data scientist, you're gonna, going to need to decide what your target column is. Um, yeah, and then I'll just kind of leave it at that. It'll just be a lot of uh, trial and error, and luckily you'll have Google or you can search online. So that's really easy for me. So I'll move on to the next one. Now, assuming we're working with a classification problem, what is one classifier we can use? 1.1. How can you instantiate the model? So how can we instantiate the classifier? And then for two, question two, actually what I'll do is I'll just kind of work through these like one, one at a time. So the question again is, um, what is one classifier? One example of a classifier. So one example of a classifier would be, so we would all have random forest classifier. So if we had to import that, how would we do that? So what we could do from sklearn dot ensemble import random force classifier. And then from there, just as another one, what we could do is we could do from sklearn dot, what would be another one? So I was thinking of logistic regression, but I want to show How about SVM from sklearn from sklearn.svm import linear SVC as well as SVC I believe yep so these ones would also be a uh, classific classification um, model now if we wanted to instantiate the model what we would do is we would do CLF so in essence, we're calling a variable, and then we would call random force classifier, and this would be instantiating the uh, the classifier. Well, 
and then from there we could go ahead and fit it and score it but in essence this is what I was aiming for when I created the flashcard and yeah so that would be part one um, we had a little extra right here but uh, we'll just stick with just random force classifier and then now number two is what is one regression model we can use and how can you instantiate the model so a regression would be random forest regressor um, so from sklearn to ensemble import random forest regressor and then that would be one um, and I'll just kind of stick with that for now and then how would we instantiate this again what we could do is we could do um, RF regressor RF reg for RF regressor or it'd probably be better if we just did CLF again but I'll just leave it alone for now so it'd be random forest regressor and then we go ahead and instantiate it right there and then finally what is the difference between a classification and a regression problem or model itself so what the, the ultimate difference though is when it comes to a classification model is it is attempting to, to identify if something is um, a specific label meaning it's attempting to identify if something is a cat or a dog or if something is true or false or if something is a one or a zero so like it needs to classify what the output is based on a series of labels whatever those labels might be um, and they could be any range of labels so there's something specific really um, whereas with regression it's more so attempting to identify the number of visitors a website will have over the next week or the sales price of a house or possibly even um, uh, maybe how many how many fish will be in the lake uh, how many fish will be born in a lake next year something like that so it's trying to guess a range of numbers based on data um, so yeah so here again we have from sklearn.ensemble import random forest classifier and then we instantiate it with clf equals random forest classifier and the same will be true for random forest regressor now something that you could do is you could always go online and just type in scikit-learn algorithm cheat sheet and from there you can use this cheat sheet to identify where you should go through um, and what you should do um, and before kind of moving on I just kind of wanted to share this as well so what where I pretty much took all this from was from an individual named uh, Mr. Burduke some, something like that. I don't know how to say the last name. But in essence, what I did was I created uh, these flashcards by just taking snapshots of each of these. And then, um, yeah, I'll just have these flashcards just for later. And since technically I didn't create this information, I can't really share these flashcards on Anki. So if you're ambitious enough, feel free to take a screenshot with Command Shift 4 on a Mac or Windows key and then. PRTSC, um, the F F10 key for a Windows. So, so I'll just kind of end that little rant. Um, I just kind of wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Paduk. <laughs> and yeah. And then, yeah. So you would also be able to select different regressors based on um, scikit-learn cheat sheet right here, which you can always go ahead and Google. So let's move on to the next question. So what is the next question? The next question is, how can you fit a model assuming CLF is our variable? So if we were to go ahead and stick with random forest classifier as our model, uh, if we wanted to fit the model, what we do is we do clf.fit, and then from there we do x train and y train. Now, if we were going to fit our model though, one thing we'd want to make sure we, that we have done is we'd want to make sure, make sure, make sure the data is numeric and not missing any values. So that would be part of exploratory data analysis and that would be, can be done with um, 
both Scikit-Learn and Pandas, but since really the goal right now is to just kind of go over these flashcards, I'm not going to go into how you would fill missing values or transform the data into a numeric value. Um, but there are a ton of ways to do it, and if you want, you can also go to uh, Mr. Baduk <laughs> and see how he's able to do it in his own um, in his GitHub. GitHub. So, what else do we have? So, if we're going to go ahead and fit our model, we'd be able to do it with this. And then now, once fit is called, how can you make predictions on it? So, if you want to make a prediction on a model, what we would need to do, if I'm not mistaken, we would do clf dot predict, and I believe it would be x test. And then that would go ahead and give us a prediction based on a specific value. So again, this is just as much practice for myself as it would be for someone else that's fairly new. Um, the only difference is that I haven't actually worked with um, scikit-learn in a little bit of time. So the next question would be, once fit is called, how can you predict the probabilities for, for a classification model? So what we could do is we could do clf.predictproba. And from there, I believe it would be, so it just takes x, and then what would it take? Predicts the probabilities for x, the prediction class probabilities, or the input. What else do we have? We have the matrix, the end shapes, and samples. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe it would also be test still. Um, and the reason I'm doing test is because in essence what this is doing is it is doing y pred would equal this and then this one would also be y pred proba but the reason I'm using x test is because I believe that it is guessing on the um, the y test as well um, but we'll go ahead and see when we see the answer and then finally how can you view predictions and probabilities? So all you would do is you pretty much just call them. So you do ypred or wait, predictions and probabilities, yep. So yeah, so we would just call the um, what we already created. So then we'd be able to see what it is. So if we see the answer, we would see that clf.fit is x train and y train, which is right here. Now ypreds is clf.predict, and then we have x test. And then likewise, for y probs, or the probability for y, we would also have clf.predict proba. And we have that right here, and then we use x test. And then from there, we would just call the two um, variables, y preds and y probes. Or, yeah. And again, that's what we're doing here. So, not bad. Um, I'm a little iffy on the x test, though, portion. But I'm certain that in time, like, in like a month or so that these will all be like second nature again so what I'll do is I'll just say that this is easy so I can see it later and then we'll keep going so once we fit our model how can you score it so after we fit our model as we did right here let's go ahead and copy and paste it into a new line what we could do is we could do clf.score and then we go ahead and call the test and then the test as well so x test and y test and then we'd get the score. And then for this question is, after scoring a model, how can you evaluate a model with cross val score? So something I kind of wanted to reiterate that the purpose of these flashcards is really to just kind of memorize the vocabulary. And the way the flashcards are created, they're created so that way we're pretty much just going down and in order of when you would begin working with your data set. So before you split the data set into X and Y, what you would do is you perform EDA, exploratory data analysis. You would transform everything into a numeric value and fill any missing um, values. So that way they had a specific um, use case. And then likewise, you just kind of check the correlation between different metrics. Now, what I did is 
Um, that's why we, it would lead into splitting and testing, or X and Y, and then test and train. And then from there, what you pretty much could do, so long as everything is fine, you would go ahead and instantiate your model, fit it, and then score it. And then you'd be able to see the rest. Um, but you could obviously also go ahead and do Y pred as we've done and view the probability before actually scoring your model. But in essence, what I wanted to do is just pretty much just show like the steps necessary for it and then memorize the vocabulary necessary for learning about, um, about the vocab behind scikit-learn. So with regards to this question, we have after scoring our model, how can you evaluate a model with the cross -val score? And then how can you import cross -val score and how can you score none and score precision? So it looks like we're going to create two uh, cross valves, but if we wanted to import it, we would first need to import it, and then we'd be able to also evaluate it. So let's go ahead and import cross -val. So it would be from sklearn, and is it metrics or is it another? If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's model selection. Nope, it would be metrics then maybe. Metrics from sklearn.metrics import um, cross. Nope, from model selection again import cross. So we would be able to to import cross L score with model selection. So after importing it, what we could do is we could go ahead and create two of these. So if we called cross file score, what would we want to do? So after scoring a model, how can you evaluate the model with cross file? Mm, what I would do is, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, let's go ahead and see. So we have our estimator, our y. Oh, uh, now it's coming. Okay, okay. So Going back then to X and Y, when we split the data set before we split it into train and test, what we would do is we could go ahead and call our estimator, and the estimator would go ahead and be, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, estimator object implementing fit. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm blanking. So, if I'm not mistaken, it would be X and Y because that is, in essence, what we're doing. So, I'm just really using cross L score and like this pre populated information to kind of judge what I'm doing right now. So, the reason that I did estimator, which is going to be random forest classifier, and then our X would be X, Y would be Y. Um, the reason I have X as X and Y as Y is because it's not necessarily referencing train or test. Um, and I'm saying that because I know that CV, which is going to be equal to 5, would mean that it would go ahead and shake up our data every time that it runs. So it would take 80% um, of the data set and then use 20%. It would take 80% of the data set as training and then 20% as test. And then that would be 1 and then it would take a different 80% of the data set and then another 20% as the test and that'd be considered two and it does it five times so it takes chunks of the data set in different sections and it um, it returns the score based on the number of times that we call CV um, so it's not necessarily that we need to split our test in training because it's going to go ahead and do it for us and then when it comes to verbose, I honestly, I still don't fully know what verbose is. I've read the information a lot on scikit-learn, but I still just can't retain um, verbose. All I know is that for this one, we're going to do verbose uh, equals two. And then from there, what I would say is we'd go ahead and do our scoring, which would equal none. Scoring, which would go ahead and equal none for this one. And then if we wanted to, we could do this, call this like cross one. And then from there, we'd go ahead and do cross two. And then we'd adjust the scoring to be what? 
what would be the other scoring? So we need it for precision. So precision, 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 how do you spell it? Precision is actually used for classification models. Um, as we dive down into this, these vocabulary, uh, these flashcards, you'll notice that regression uh, models will have different metrics to analyze the results um, compared to classification. And precision is based on classification. So this is what I would go ahead and give us as our like our answer to answer these three questions. So we import cross val score with model selection. And we were going to go ahead and score the model or evaluate the model. Hmm. Yeah, we'd evaluate the model right here. And then from there, we'd also have the scoring, which is equal to none, and scoring precision. Now, I have a gut feeling that this actually might be wrong after rereading this first question because it's asking after scoring our model. So I'm assuming that clf.score was saved to a variable. Well, let's go ahead and see what the answer is. So, okay, so it looks like it wasn't. No, it was. So then it would be after instantiating our model, at least if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and see what Daniel did though. So what he did was ypreds, and then he has the, the entire output. Um, and again, you guys could always just do this on your own. Just go and look up someone else's, um, someone else's like model, and then just evaluate how they run it, how they go through, and what they do on Kaggle. And I'll go ahead and work on some Kaggle data sets eventually, but I really want to get better at communicating and just having pretty much speaking. So that's why I'm just creating just a ton of these because this is just practice for myself as well. Um, but what Daniel did is he actually did not, he just said that the estimator would be CLF. And if we were going to go ahead and look at what CLF last was, we would see that it is random forest classifier. So he instantiated the model, he fit it, did predict, predict proba. And then from there, he did the score as well as just this. So in essence, all this is, is it would be random forest classifier. So it would be exactly actually what we just did right here. So that would be correct. Um, but instead of it being um, random forest classifier, he just did uh, estimator equals CLF, which is the same thing as this one. But I am estimator, esti Okay, um, that one's pretty good. I'll go ahead and select good for now for this one. And then we'll just keep moving on. So for this question, for a classification, how can you view the accuracy, ROC, ROC <laughs> curve and score, a confusion matrix and classification report? And then how can you import each metric for question one? So if some of you are smart, you might have backed up and already seen how we would do this over um, into the GitHub, but if we wanted to import these items, what I would first do is I just copy it so that way it's easier to see, and then we'll go ahead and import it. So for the accuracy, what I would do is do from sklearn.metrics import accuracy score, and then it would also be classification report, and then from there. I hope I'm not mistaken with ROC. Okay. And then again, it would be ROC curve. And let's go ahead and press enter. And then we'll just copy and paste this over. So that way it just looks a little bit better. So accuracy classification report, ROC AOC score, ROC curve. And then now we also need a confusion matrix. So what would the confusion matrix be? Would it also be in metrics? It would. Let's go ahead and actually press enter and see if that works. Cool, so it does. So let's see what the answer would be then over here. Uh, 
how can you view? Hmm. So I should actually go ahead and update this then and say, how can you import and actually view like what the output is? So in our case, in order to view the accuracy, what it would be is it would be accuracy score, we take the Y test and then the Y preds for the accuracy. And then from there, for the ROC, AOC, um, what we would do is we would call the false positive rate, true positive rate, and then the threshold, which would equal the ROC Y test and Y probes. And we go ahead and split that as well. And then from there, it looks like we'd go ahead and do Y test and Y preds. Hmm. So let's go ahead and look at this one more time. So if you've ever watched YouTube videos where someone goes through and they actually like code, um, <laughs> what I used to do is I pretty much would go ahead and watch the video and then I would just kind of close my eyes and try to recall what it was or what it was that they coded and they created. So a lot of this is still, it seems foreign to me because it's been a very long time since I've done it. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of leave it at that. So the accuracy score would be Y test and Y preds. And then this false positive rate, true positive rate, and then threshold would be something I'd want to go ahead and reevaluate as well as the Y probos. So if we were to look at the Y probs, where would they be created? What would they be? So it looks like they would be the probability, which would be the X test for CLF as well, and if we were to see the Y preds, Y probes. So this would be the Y probes, and we'd be predicting it. And then all the ROC, AOC is doing is it'll go ahead and um, return the, it'll return like a curved uh, graph, if you will. So, hmm. And then we have the confusion matrix, Y test and Y preds as well as the classification report. So this would be the classification report. It return our precision, which we mentioned up here. And then it would also return the recall, the F1 score, and then the support. Now the support, I'm a little iffy on. I don't truly remember what that is. Um, the F1, I believe, is a combination of recall and precision or accuracy. So I'm going to definitely have to like study these on my own before creating another one of these videos. But um, in essence, what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and end this video here, and I'm going to go ahead and try to memorize um, this section in particular. Um, and I believe we are halfway through with memorizing this entire data set. Um, eventually, we'll do pipeline and saving and, tr saving and loading a pre-trained model, as well as randomized search CV. So since we're at number 10... Yeah, I'll go ahead and end this video here um, and then do some additional study on my end. So if you would like, please feel free to click on any of the links in the description. I'll go ahead and link um, Daniel's notebook here. Uh, he should get all the real credit, honestly, for the stuff that I've truly learned. So I'll just kind of end this video here and then I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next one.